Well, let's start with an enhancement that's sure to get everyone excited, which is save as previous version. We'll open this part and take a look at how it's done. Simply go to your save as dialog. Because the file is being referenced by other open documents, it makes sense to use the save as copy and continue option. Navigate to the save as type. Within here, you will see all the familiar savers types, but you'll also notice we have two new options, SOLIDWORKS 2022 part and SOLIDWORKS 2023 part. So we can save our document up to two previous releases back. As long as there are no 2024 specific features in our part, i.e. features that only exist in SOLIDWORKS 2024, then it will save no problem and we'll be able to open the files in the previous versions. If there are 2024 specific features, we'll have to address those prior to saving. Continuing on, we'll switch to our start configuration. This brings us back to an earlier version of the design. We'll take the visible sketch and use it for a revolve cut. New to the 2024 release, we now have the option to toggle on flip side to cut within the revolve feature. This cuts everything outside the contour of the sketch and is similar to the functionality within the Extruded Cut tool. The ability to create a rectangular bounding box has been available in SOLIDWORKS for a few releases. Prior to 2024, we could only create rectangular bounding boxes, but now we see the functionality extended to allow us to calculate the bounding box for cylindrical components. We simply select cylindrical from the property manager. As you can see from the preview, it hasn't oriented the bounding box exactly as we would like, but it's not a problem. We can just select a custom plane to correctly define its orientation. We'll complete the feature and we can see the bounding box has been created and is shown at the top of the feature tree. Let's switch our configurations and go back to the top level assembly. We'll open up this component and switch configurations. You'll notice we have a different triangular cutout. We would like to lighten the part by patterning these cutouts. We select the front plane to give the pattern direction and then choose linear pattern. We'll adjust the spacing in instances. New to 2024 is symmetric linear pattern, so we no longer need to use the pattern seed only tick box and it will ensure the pattern remains symmetric should you wish to make changes to the spacing and instances. Next, we'll move to the surfacing tab where we have a new option for untrimmed surface. But first, let's copy a surface using the offset surface tool, setting the offset value to zero millimeters. Let's say this is an injection molded part. I would like to capture the internal triangles of the copied surface as shut off surfaces. In previous releases, this would have required several commands. New to 2024 is the ability to exclude parent surface in the untrimmed surface command. As you can see, when we hide the solid, we are left with the copied surface and all the individual untrimmed surfaces. Let's go back to the top level assembly. We'll just zoom in on this cutaway view and open up this plate. We'll edit the sketch and draw a rectangle. When I select one of the sketch lines, we see a dimension preview in grey. This is currently just a preview, but if we select it, we can key in a value in our modify box and this dimension becomes a driving dimension within the sketch. This also works when selecting multiple entities. For example, I can control select the center line and this line of the rectangle. An angle dimension appears, which I click and fill in the value to define the size. The new dimension tool doesn't interfere with the context menu, 
As you can see, I can still select two lines and add an equals relation between them. I'll exit the sketch. Now we'll launch the hole wizard. We'll define the type of hole we want and then move to the positions tab. New in 2024 is the ability to use a pre-existing sketch to define the location of our holes. We select our rectangle sketch. You'll notice from the preview that it no longer only allows sketch points. We can now use endpoints of lines. We can choose whether or not to create instances of holes on construction geometry also. I only need three bolt holes, whereas we have four previewing. Not a problem. Activate the Instances to Skip tab within the Property Manager and select the Instances to Skip from within the Graphics area. Back to the top level assembly. We'll now look at this assembly and the new ability to create a multi-body part from assembly. In this example, we are going to create a fixture or jig to hold the sub-assembly in place for welding. We also need a precise understanding of the weight of this assembly, including the welds, and whether there will be any interferences between the welds and the fixture. It's possible to do this in an assembly, but it's easier at part level. And in order to calculate an accurate weight for our welds, we'd like to use the fillet bead tool, which is only available at part level. Historically, we may have chosen to save this assembly as a part, However, that would break the link back to the assembly and we would have no feature tree available, so making modifications would be difficult. New to 2024, we now have an option to make multi-poly part from assembly. With this, we can carry across surface and solid bodies, planes and coordinate systems from the assembly and also the part material. There is also a choice to break the link to the original assembly if you desire. Press OK and we now have our multi-body part. Let's have a look at our feature tree. You can see we have our surface and solid bodies pulled through and each of them has their respective material shown here. I'm going to hide the solid bodies away to leave me with some surfaces. We'll use mutual trim to trim the overlapping surfaces. and then thicken the surface geometry to three millimeters outside. We can then show all the bodies, including our fixture. We'll now show the original assembly and the multi-body part side by side. If any changes are made to the original assembly, they propagate through to the multi-body part after a rebuild. Now for the welds. We'll create the fillet beads by launching the command and selecting the faces. The fillet bead is created at the intersection of the two selected faces. Because we have used fillet bead, weld bodies are created and stored within the cutlass folder, and we can specify materials for each of the bodies. This will ensure we have a very accurate weight. We can also check interferences using the interference detection tool. Of course, there is an interference detected between the welds and the fixture. To resolve that issue, we simply hide the bodies and create a chamfer on the internal edges of the fixture. Finally, we'll show our components again, rerun the interference detection and as you can see, no interferences have been detected.